Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic practices and duties by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me as always is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Sheikhna, we were discussing salah. We were discussing different types of salah, uh, different conditions in facing the Qibla and criteria. What about the rules of the clothes and covering oneself? when praying uh, Salah. Is it different for men and is it different for women? Inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin. With regard to the Musalli's clothes, the one who prays, the prayers, um, it is mandatory, it's wajib for them, for the one who wants to offer prayers, to make sure that he initially for the men, to cover their private parts, uh, the back and the front, both. And it's mustahab to cover from the navel till the knee. Okay, so this is mustahab. That's mustahab. But the Did wajib is to cover the private parts, both sides, in the back and on the front. That's the wajib, that's the minimum requirement for the salah. Even if you are alone in a locked room and nobody has the access to that room, because we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to make sure we are in a position respectfully and um, in, in a moral position, position towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the minimum requirement for the men. With regard to the women, they need to cover all the body, uh, like their hijab, as they wear the hijab, um, to cover their head and the hair and the body. And they can actually uh, let the hands uh, to the wrist uh, to be shown and the face where they do the wudu, so the, the span of the uh, fingers and they can show that part um, of the face and um, the upper side of the feet as well they can show it as well to the ankle um, otherwise the rest of her body must be covered uh, as I said, like the hijab, um, when she stands towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, uh, we are in a, in a position that we have to, uh, number one, respect our, ourselves and respect this ibadah and respect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we are standing in, in front of uh, the qibla and praying towards Him. Awesome. What are the criteria of the actual clothes themselves? For example, men are not allowed to wear silk, we know this. And so therefore we cannot pray in silk. Um, are there any other criteria or ahkam in regards to the labas of uh, the, the one that is praying? Yes, there are a few conditions with regard to the labas al musalli, the clothes for the musalli himself and herself to consider. The first one is the tahara, that there must be the clothes and the body of the musalli must be pure and tahir. In other words, no najasa, no impurities should be on their clothes uh, at all times when they're offering prayers. And um, it's important that um, the one who wants to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and pray before him to clean himself. And as we clean ourselves, you know, we take a shower before we go out to meet people outside in the business world, in the mosques, for example, in education establishments and so forth to also have this cleanliness and tahara when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our prayers. Shaykh, now, what if someone didn't know that their clothes were najis? What happens in that situation? Well, there are three scenarios for this uh, question. Number one, <coughs> if they don't know if it was najis. So let's say I prayed with this abaa or the garment or dishdasha or... or suit and then later on after the salah I found out that it was najis actually I prayed with the najis clothes because I didn't know and I made my uh, decision to pray and, and, and my certainty that I'm praying with a, with a pure and tahir clothes then in this situation the salah is valid I don't have to repeat it okay. because I began the salah with the certainty that the, the, the clothes are tahir and pure but later on I found out it was najis. So in this situation and case, the salah is valid 
and I don't have to repeat. Salah. The second scenario is when I forgot. I knew that this was najis. I knew that this clothes was najis. This shirt or um, um, the suit was najis. And I prayed with it. In such situation, if I remember the najasa within the time of the salah, while I'm praying and performing the salah, in the middle of the salah, let's say I'm doing qunut or sujood, mm -hmm. and I discover that, yes, I remember that this was najis, actually. Or I discovered after the salah that those clothes that I was wearing, they were all najis. In this situation, because I forgot, I knew in the beginning what I forgot for the salah, to change them and, and clean them. In the situation, the Sayyid said that you have to repeat uh, the salah in time, or if it's out of time, you have to do the qada. Okay, so let's just clarify this. If you have yaqeen, you believe, I'm Tahir, I'm going to pray salah, I pray salah, later on, oh, there was nijasa, it's okay, don't worry, because you checked beforehand. Exactly. You had exactly. yaqeen. You began with, with certainty. You began with certainty. If I say, oh, I've got some blood on my sleeve here, I need to wash that off before I pray salah or something, I forgot about the blood. I went, I prayed Salah with the jacket. And then I remember, oh, there was blood on this. This was najis. I can't use this. That prayer must be repeated. Even if you were inside the Salah itself, while you were praying, as yes. I've said, you were in the Qunut, Sujood, Ruku' and you remembered yes. that, oh, there was a najasa. I forgot ah. to clean. I forgot to change. Mm -hmm. You still have to uh, repeat the Salah okay. and, and, and from new and pray again. Excellent. So that's the second scenario. The third scenario, if the one has the doubts about whether the, um, the, these clothes are, are najis or tahir. Not sure. Is it tahir or najis? Let's say he was in a uh, place where they were, were exposed to najasa. For example, in a slow tree house, I don't know, in a butchery. And he's not sure if, if the, there were some blood, for example, uh, attached to his clothes, for example. So, unsure. He's unsure about it, uh, there's doubts. In the situation, uh, if he prays, because he has doubts, um, and he's not certain, and then he says, okay, let me pray. Oh, so I, don't, I don't have the certainty. He prays, but after he prays, he discovers that, oh, there was najasa actually. Because he, uh, well, the, the najasa was doubts, then in this say, case and situation, the salah is, is valid. Okay, so sahih. Exactly, because he began with doubts. And is it the, um, the clothes are najis or tahir? And as I've said the hadith in, in, in a few episodes ago, that oh. tahir. everything is tahir for you, unless you're certain it's najis. Yes. So here as well, I began with the, with the, the fact that, well, inshallah tahir, because I'm, I have doubts, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But because I discovered later, after the salah, mm -hmm. uh, and I began with doubts, not certainty. Because the rule is what? Everything is Tahir. So, uh, the salah is valid and I don't have to repeat, repeat it at all. So, Shaykhna, in regards to the libas of the masalli, do we have any mustahabat, anything recommended for the masalli to wear in prayer? Yes, there are quite a few uh, mustahab with regard to uh, the clothing of the musalli of the prayers. Um, the first one is wearing the amama, for example. Awesome. As the hadith says by the Prophet sallallahu he says, "Rakatan bi amama, afdal min arbaat baghir amama." So, to pray with amama with a turban, uh, two rak'a with, with turban is better than uh, four rak'a without. So you get. Um, uh, the thawab um, for wearing the imama in the prayers. In regards to the imama, can I wear any sort of imama? Or does it have to be like, mashallah, like your one, your, your kummi style? Um, or can I just get any piece of cloth to wrap around? Yeah, and something use that? that you, you can easily say it's imama, it's just to wrap it around your head. So to be known as imama, I mean, it doesn't have to be specifically in the house style. A house style or a shape. So that's fine. Okay. Uh, the other. Uh, mustahab is to, um, according to the narration as well, to wear cotton. So the okay. clothes which are with cotton. Uh, the hadith says, Ilbasu thiyab al-qatl. Wear the cotton clothes. 
فإنه لباس رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وهو لباسنا it is the clothes of the prophet and us أهل البيت عليهم السلام so this, this, the emphasis on wearing the cotton type of clothes uh, also to be white, white color for example another mustahab uh, also to wear khatam of aqiq in the prayers that's mustahab as well عن الصادق عليه السلام صلاة ركعتين بفص عقيق تعدل ألف ركعة بغيره to, wear, oh. uh, to pray two ركعه with عقيق is equal to 1000 ركعة oh, imagine uh, without عقيق so see the great uh, rewards also to wear the cleanest of your clothes so you make sure when you want to start the prayers uh, to wear the ones which uh, the cleanest, just recently washed, for example. And I remember some old, the elderly used to change their clothes and wear the, uh, the white and uh, just recently washed clothes. And um, also to, uh, to cover between the navel and the knee, as I've mentioned uh, previously, with regard to the Shurut uh, al-Musalli, of the praise of uh, clothings. Shaykh, what about the makrubad? What should we try and stay away from when we're dressing up for salah? With regard to the makru, to wear niqab for the women, for the ladies. Okay. Niqab in the prayers uh, is makru. Um, uh, the rawai says, the hadith says, إِذَا كَشَفَتْ عَنْ مَوْضَعَ السُّجُودِ فَلَا بَأْسِ If she uncovers the place of the sujood, let's say the niqab comes to her nose, for example, and the location of the uh, sujood, the forehead is now visible, that's fine. When asfarat fahu afdal. So if she takes off the niqab, it's better. So for the women, they should pray without niqab. But they can pray with the niqab, there's no issue with it. It's just a bit uh, inconvenient just, for lifting yeah, exactly. it up for the sujood and putting it yeah. back down. So, Shaykhna, what about if I have a, an image on my t-shirt or something like that? Is that also makru? Yeah, so it's also mentioned that it's makruf to wear uh, the clothes which has uh, the pictures or shapes of animals, for example, or human beings, for example, you know, celebrities and so forth. So it's makruh as well. That's one of the makruhat in the salah as well. And um, another makruh is to wear dirty clothes, you know, let's say uh, stained with mud or food, remaining of the food, for example. Uh, let's say ketchup and, and so forth to pray with it because you're standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you have to be in, in a cleanliness, cleanliness position and, and state um, the other makruhat for example uh, to pray with a very tight clothes they say tight jeans uh, that sticks on your body that's also makruh uh, for the musalli and um, also, to have, for example, um, coins with pictures as well in the pocket. That's uh, maybe oh, a, wow. a, a new issue as well. Uh, Macro to have. Um, I think, to be honest, everyone has money, coins with the Queen's face on it or, you know, banknotes. Yeah, so you're saying it's better to take your wallet out of your pocket. Exactly, exactly. The say it says it's, it's Macro to have this in your pocket. Okay. So you just bring it out and pray. Shaykh, I've got a question here sent in by one of the viewers. That is, for men, is it okay to pray in shorts or, uh, you know, like boxer shorts or, you know, undergarments as such? Is it okay to pray in, in, in that? I mean, yeah, I mean, for some people it makes the life easier for them to wake up in the morning and uh, quickly, you know, they are wearing, for example, uh, the boxes or the shorts and then they can do the wudu straight away, pray and then go back to sleep. There's no issue with it. It's just the, uh, it's better for them uh, to cover from navel to the knees, as I've mentioned. That's the mustahab thing, to cover from the navel yeah, I mean, all the way to the knees. There's more thawab in that. It, it's better than just a, a you know, very short, um, let's say, trunk or, or, or boxes. So if they can actually wear such thing, that's fine. They've done you know, even the mustahab as well. Thank you, Shaykhna, for clarifying that. Is there any other criteria? I mean, we discussed the tahara of the clothes. We've discussed mustahabat. We've discussed makrubat. Is there any other criteria of clothes when it comes to praying salah? Yes, the second criteria is that it's mandatory for the one who wants to pray. He must make sure that the clothes that he has on, 
when his body is not usurped. Again, the okay. same applies to, I think the wudu we mentioned, yes. ghusl and tayammum, that they should be all uh, yeah. either being given permission to be used or to be yours. Okay. You own them, for example. Otherwise, you have to ask permission. So the clothes, the awaya, the imana, whatever I want to use to pray, or in somebody's house or in a place, yes. public place, let's say, whatever I borrow, I have to ask the permission from that person so I can pray with. If the case, somebody, he didn't know that this is ghasub, let's say the abaya is not mm -hmm. known to be ghasub, somebody gave it to me, and it was somebody else's property, for example, and I prayed with it, what happens? If I didn't know that this is ghasub, and I prayed, and after the pray, I discovered that salah is valid, that's fine. Because I didn't know, because I be began the salah with assuming being certain and assuming that this is uh, permissible to use. To yeah. use. Exactly. Um, the same applies if, um, if somebody uses somebody else's garments or clothes to pray. Now the other issue with the usurp, um, sometimes we think that usurp means to take somebody else's wealth without their permission. But even when it, when it comes to the zakat and khums that we have to pay to the shara, um, again, if I buy these clothes without paying the khums and zakat, and I know that, that mm -hmm. I bought them without purifying my wealth by paying the khums and or zakat, it depends on the situation, and uh, I buy those, those clothes without paying the hummus. And then I, I pray with the clothes which were not, uh, which were bought by the money which was not paid hummus. In this case, the salah will be void and bottle. Oh, wow. So we have to be careful that we set up uh, a yearly um, accounts for our hummus and pay so them if you haven't So if you haven't paid your hummus or zakat, and that money is used to purchase clothes that you pray in, it's not valid. It's not acceptable. Exactly. They have to make sure that um, when they buy things and they want to use it for the salah, for example, they've been paid hummus for. And of course, the said said this is an obligatory precaution. So, okay. that mm -hmm. the salah won't be uh, valid in this situation. So, this is the situation for those who don't pay hummus. So the best thing is to pay the hummus, even for the Hajj, for example, to purify our money. Uh, that's what is required. Ascent. Thank you very much, Sheikh, for that discussion. And thank you to the viewers for joining us on this discussion. If you have any questions in regards to Ahkam or any of the topics we've covered, please send them to the contact details provided. And inshallah, the Sheikh will be able to answer them for you. Until next time, pay your khums. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.